Today's read aloud is called Do You Know About Insects by Buffy Silverman. And this is going to be a non-fiction book, which means it is not fiction, which means it is not fake. It's all true. It's a scientific book with facts. So let's read about insects. Insects have six legs. A luna moth spreads his wings. He flies in the night. A tiny flea hops on a dog. She sucks blood. Moths and fleas are insects. A beetle is an insect too. How can you tell? Insects are animals with six legs. So boys and girls, if you see an animal that has six legs, it's an insect. Let's read this caption. Count the dragonfly's legs. Is it an insect? Let's count the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that is definitely an insect. Insect bodies. Insect bodies have hard outer coverings called exoskeletons. They protect their bodies. The body of an adult insect has three parts. The head is at the front. The thorax is in the middle. The abdomen is at the end. Can you see the three main body parts on this adult wasp? We know where the head is. The thorax is the middle part of the body. And the abdomen is at the very end. So those are the three parts of the insect or of the wasp. A praying mantis has huge eyes on its head. It sees a crawling caterpillar. Watch out! The praying mantis eats the caterpillar. Oh no! A grasshopper waves the long thin antennas on its head. It feels and smells with this antenna, antennas. A grasshopper waves its antennas. Oh, that would be cool if humans had antennas, huh? We could smell with them. An insect's wings and legs are on its thorax. Remember, boys and girls, the thorax is the middle part of the body. Insects use their wings and legs to move. A wasp's wings are on the middle part of its body. This part is called the thorax. So that middle part right there is the thorax. A tree hopper's thorax looks like a thorn. It helps the hopper hide on a plant stem. Oh, how clever is that? So that's an adaptation that helps it blend in and camouflage. Look at this is the thorn on a stem of a plant, and this is the tree hopper's um, thorax. It looks like a, a thorn too. How cool is that? Insects breathe through openings along the thorax and the abdomen. Do you see the tiny openings on this cricket's body? Insects breathe through these openings. How interesting. So they don't have a nose like we do where we breathe out of. You see where that little purple point is pointing to? That's where it breathes through. That's pretty cool. The food that an insect eats is broken down in the abdomen. Beware of the bee stinger. It is on the end of its abdomen. Honeybees sting to keep other animals away from their hives. <gasps> Look at that picture. This bee is about to sting someone. Yikes, I've been stung a few times, have you? Look at that point right there. He's about to really hurt somebody. How insects grow. Insects begin life as eggs. A katydid lays eggs through a tube on her abdomen. This leaf, katydid, is laying eggs on a log. So this animal is called a katydid, and right where this yellow part is, or the yellow pointer, is showing that that's where she's laying her eggs. Pretty cool. Ants take care of, or ants take care of eggs in an underground nest. So there are the mama ants kind of hanging out and taking care of their eggs there. The eggs are white. And that's where little baby ants will come out of. 
A giant water bug lays eggs on her mate's back. He carries the eggs until they hatch. So the mama water bug will lay all of her eggs on the dad, and he carries them around on his back until they hatch. How cool is that? Nymphs hatch from the water bugs. Nymphs look like their parents, but they have no wings. This dragonfly nymph lives in a pond. It has no wings, but it can crawl underwater. Hey, that's pretty cool. I don't think I know a lot of insects that can be underwater. Cricket nymphs hop in a field. They eat lots of plants. The nymphs grow bigger. A snowy tree cricket nymph eats plants to grow. But the nymphs' exoskeletons cannot grow. The nymphs shed their exoskeletons and grow new ones. Then they become adults. Boys and girls, could you imagine if our skeleton didn't grow, didn't grow along with us? And so you would have to shed or get rid of that skeleton and then have a new one made? You just automatically make a new one? Well, that's what this animal does. Cricket nymphs shed their outer covering seven times or more. Many insects grow in a different way. They look like worms when they hatch. They are called larvas. These larvas grow in a nest made of wax. They will grow into bumblebees. Hey, that's cool. Insects lay eggs where their larvas will find food. A ladybug lays eggs on a leaf. Soon larvas will hatch from the eggs. The larvas will hunt aphids that live on the leaves. So there's the mama ladybug laying her little baby ladybugs. Larvas eat and eat. They grow fast. They shed their exoskeletons many times. Then they become pupas. A ladybug larva eats an aphid. Pupas grow and change inside a hard case. They come out of the case when they are adults. Then they have wings. The females can lay eggs. Bumblebee pupas grow inside their cases. You guys remember that when we had the little uh, butterfly? We learned about the butterfly cycle and animal cycles. The deer, the badger, the raccoon life cycles. And we saw that for the insects, of course, they would have their um, pupas and they would grow out of the pupas. They would grow wings. Pretty cool. Where insects live. Insects live almost everywhere on earth. Millions of different insects live in rainforests. Caterpillars munch on tree leaves in the rainforest. Honey pot ants live in the desert. These ants get extra food. When food is hard to find, they will feed their nestmates. I know why they're called honey pot ants. Because look, it looks like they have honey pots at the end of their bodies. Oh, very cool, but they're just filling themselves up with extra food. Caterpillars are larvas. This caterpillar will become a moth. The abdomens of honeypot ants swell up with food. Oh, wow, that's so cool. How do these beetles live? How do these beetles live in the cold? Special chemicals inside their bodies keep them from freezing. This red bark beetle can live through freezing winters in Alaska. Wow, I've always wondered about that. Why is it that some insects can live in really, really cold weather? Well, it's because they have special chemicals in their bodies that keep them from freezing. That is so cool. Where can you find insects? Fireflies light up the night in this meadow. That is so wonderful. Look at those little lights. They're not little Christmas lights there. They're fireflies. Match the mouths. Some insects such suck liquids with their mouths. Others chew. Match the insects on page 28 with the pictures on page 29. How do their mouths help them get food? Now check out the dragonfly nymph. It literally has a fish in its mouth. Check out the paper wasp in his mouth. Check out the butterfly. 
and the house fly. We don't like the house fly, huh? All right, number one. This insect shoots out its mouth. Watch it catch a fish. Number two. This insect's mouth is like a sponge. It soaks up spilled juice. So it's kind of like a straw. I never knew that. Number three. This insect sips nectar from flowers. So it has to have a very, very long, um, like straw coming out of its mouth too. And number four, this insect chews other insects and feeds them to its young. I think you can tell just by the pictures which um, insect it is. And that's it, boys and girls. And many nonfiction books will have glossaries at the end of the books. And that is to help you with any words that you may not understand in the book. So this has a list of all of those words and what they mean. So it tells you what an abdomen is, what an antenna is, what a caterpillar is. Well, that's it, boys and girls. It was a quick and easy book, a nonfiction text on what insects are. So think about three things that make insects insects. Number one, they have six legs. Number two is what? And number three is what? Think about it. All right, boys and girls, keep reading, and I'll see you soon. Bye.